we follow up with a home program. Now, we this is going to help address the first rib as well as the scalenes. But it's important when we think about the traditional scalene stretches, what do you see happening? You hold the bottom of a chair and you crank your head to the side. Given what we've talked about throughout the series of these courses, do you think that would be a good thing or a bad thing? Because remember, we don't want scapular depression because that puts more tension on the brachial plexus. So if we're holding onto the chair and pulling down, we're depressing the scapula. If we're side bending without the first rib stabilized, what happens is that's going to pull that rib up. So instead of doing it this way, I would recommend performing the scaling stretch with the first rib stabilized. So you can use a belt. You can use your opposite hand. So you're going to come in. I'm going to show this on my left side. So I'm going to come in. Okay. And if you decide to use a loop belt, that works well. I'll have patients go to the thrift store and buy some old belts and put them together. That works well, unless they want to create something on their own. So they're going to come in. I want the arm, that the side you're working on, to be completely relaxed. So here's where you want to have it supported. Okay. So they take a deep breath. As the patient exhales, you're pulling down. With your right side, the left arm staying completely relaxed. This stabilizes the first rib. Then you can add a little stretch. You can have the patient do a gentle chin roll and side bend away. And typically, this is enough where they start to feel a stretch. You don't have to go further. If they're not, then you can add a little bit of ipsilateral cervical rotation. So it's important that the ribs stay stabilized when you're stretching the scalenes. You don't want to have them cranking their head to the side without that rib stabilized or it's going to pull that rib right back up.